Finding Langston by Lisa Klein Ransom is a historical fiction novel set in 1946, shortly after the end of World War II and during the Great Migration, which is a time when many African Americans moved from the farms of the South to the cities in the North and the West to work in factories. Langston and his father moved from Alabama just after the death of his mother to Chicago, Illinois, and live in a neighborhood known as Bronzeville. As you can imagine, this is a very big and difficult change for Langston, who is still dealing with the loss of his mother. And now he has left the only home he has ever known and the rest of his extended family and friends behind to start over in a completely different environment. He is also being bullied at school for being from the country. It is a lot for an 11 year old boy to handle and you can feel the weight of his grief and sorrow. I mean, I really just wanted to give this kid a hug. When Langston remembers his mother, you can feel the close connection they had. One day, when trying to avoid his bullies, Langston stumbles upon the George Cleveland Hall Library, where everyone is welcome. This was not true of the libraries in the southern states like Alabama. This opens a whole new world for Langston. A librarian wonders if he is named after Langston Hughes, an African-American writer, and shows Langston a book of his poetry. Langston really connects with the poems of Langston Hughes, which helps him feel less alone and like someone else experienced similar struggles and helps him uncover a secret that will help him through his sadness. Let's talk about From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. Well, just one letter, Zoe's life is changed forever. On her 12th birthday, she receives a letter from her father, Marcus, who's been in prison for a terrible crime that he now claims he has never committed. Well, Zoe's never really met her father before. After all, she's been in prison her entire life. But she doesn't feel like she's missing out. She thinks she's doing just fine. After all, she has her mom and she has her awesome stepdad, Paul. Plus, this summer she has a bakery internship and if she can prove to her parents that she's mature enough, she might get to audition to be on the Food Network's Kids Bake Challenge. But now she just can't get Marcus's letter out of her head. What if he really was innocent? And why has he never contacted her before? Well, soon enough, Zoe finds herself in a tangled web of truth and lies as she starts to send secret letters back and forth to Marcus. So with bakery confections weighing on one side of her mind, and Marcus' conviction weighing heavily on the other, this is one recipe Zoe does not know how to balance. This is a fantastic story about a very courageous little girl who questions assumptions, searches for truth, and does what she believes is right, even in the face of great opposition. I definitely recommend giving Zoe Washington a chance. A Galaxy of Sea Stars by Jean Zulik Ferulo. In A Galaxy of Sea Stars, we meet Izzy, whose dad recently returned from a deployment in Afghanistan and is dealing with PTSD while trying to build a new business. Izzy's mother is away on a neighboring island, taking time away from her marriage and the family under the guise of helping out an extended family member. Izzy herself is feeling a bit lost as her friend group, called the Sea Stars, seems to be changing. As if things aren't hard enough, Izzy's dad introduces her to a friend who's just moved from Afghanistan with his family, and Izzy seems to be saddled with befriending their daughter, Sitara, who will be attending the same school. Sitara wears a hijab and seems so different from anyone Izzy knows. As Izzy's friendship issues and Sitara's being bullied at school collide, Izzy will learn what it means to be brave. This book is all about change, how it is inevitable, and embracing differences, especially with friendship and family. The author, Jean Zulek Ferrugo, actually lives in Connecticut and works with a local refugee organization. Hi, I'm here to tell you about a Nutmeg nominee called Just Like Jackie by Lindsay Stoddard. In this book, Rob Robinson, who goes by the nickname of Robbie, lives in Vermont. She and her grandfather, who is raising her, like to 
go hiking in the woods. They like to tap their maple trees to get sugar sap to make homemade maple syrup. And Grandpa owns a garage where he fixes cars and he's even teaching Robbie how to fix cars and she's really kind of good at it too. Now, Grandpa is her only living relative and she doesn't know anything about her mother, which really upsets her, but she's just happy to have Grandpa with her. Now, school's a little different. She goes into school, she can't control her temper, and one day Alex the bully calls her a motherless Robin bird. And this makes Robbie so angry. First of all, Robbie does not like the nickname Robin. And secondly, she's not motherless. So what does she do? She goes ahead and she punches Alex in the face. Of course, she has to go down to the principal's office and her grandfather is called in to the school, which Robbie does not want to happen. Grandpa is very, very forgetful. And she's afraid if people know just how forgetful he is, that they may be separated. So she keeps it a secret. He gets called into the principal's office and things go okay. What happened with his forgetfulness wasn't so noticeable. So they send Robbie home with Grandpa for the day. The next day, all her classmates are surprised that she was not suspended for punching Alex. She was not suspended, of course, because she was in school, but she was told she had to go to a counseling session with the very nice counselor, Miss Gloria. But she goes and they have nice talks because she knows that if she doesn't talk to Miss Gloria, they're probably going to call her grandfather back into the school and she does not want that. So she behaves the best she can behave. Then one day, Miss Gloria tells her that she's going to have a couple other students come into the counseling session with them. So they'll have like this group counseling. And Robbie's okay with that. She goes back to class. The next day, Miss Gloria comes. Of course, she calls Robbie. She also calls Candace. And Candace always has her head down. and She always looks sad. She calls Oscar. Oscar almost never says anything. And unfortunately, she calls Alex the bully. Hmm. Robbie's not too happy with that one. So the four of them go down to the council room with Miss Gloria, and they come up with some rules, like letting everybody have their turn talking. She tells them about her magic wand. Who's ever holding the wand is the one who gets to talk and everybody else has to listen and they come up with some other rules and things are going okay, kind of. And as you read this book, you're going to find out some answers, some answers that Robbie is really, really trying to find out. Like, why is Candace, Oscar and Alex in counseling with her? What is wrong with her grandfather? Why won't her grandfather tell her anything about her mother? What is her mother's name? And will she be able to control her anger so that her grandfather never gets called back into the school? Hmm. This is actually a great story. If you're looking for a book where you need to know what's happening in the lives of your characters. This is a great story. If you like trying to figure out what's wrong and how the characters overcome the obstacles in their life, you won't be able to put this book down if you like to think while you're reading. And while you're reading, you like to root for your characters maybe one or all of them, and how they cope with their difficult situations. If you choose to read this book, just like Jackie, I hope you like it as much as I do.
Hi, I'm Miss Bailey, and I wanted to share the graphic novel Katie the Cat Sitter by Colleen Venable with you. Uh, the main character is Katie, and she is pretty sure she's going to have the worst summer ever. Her best friend Bethany is going away to summer camp, and Katie can't go. Um, she'll be home stuck in New York City. So Katie decides to take matters into her own hand and try to earn some money doing different odd jobs around her apartment complex so that maybe she can uh, buy one week of summer camp and that way spend some time with Bethany. And it kind of doesn't go very well for her. She kind of fails at being able to help her neighbors bring in their groceries, water their plants. Um, she, she's just about ready to give up on her plan when Miss Lang, a woman in her complex, hires her to watch her cats for $30 an hour, which is dream job level status for Katie. And so of course she agrees, and then she shows up and she realizes Miss Lang has 217 cats. And they're not ordinary cats. They uh, watch TV, they use the computer, they knit, they um, watch scary movies, they tell ghost stories, they do martial arts, um, they love to order pizza, trash the apartment. So Katie kind of has her hands full and it's nothing she can't handle, but she's also aware this is not normal. So once she starts to kind of look a little bit more closely at Ms. Lang, she realizes uh, Ms. Lang is a little bit mysterious. And why does Ms. Lang keep secretly going out at night? One night, Ms. Lang doesn't return, and Katie and the cats have to go find her. So um, maybe then Katie will find out who Ms. Lang really is. This graphic novel is full of humor, uh, some mystery, superheroes, adventure, and of course, cats. I hope you enjoy it. For fans of A Tale Dark and Grim by Adam Gidwitz and Smaller Spaces by Katherine Arden, you will want to check out Night Books by J.A. White. Alex loves all things creepy and dark. He loves scary movies, and at night, he writes scary stories in his notebook, or as he calls them, his night books. The kids at school make fun of him for this, and he is really tired of feeling like an outcast. So one night, Alex decides to sneak out of his family's apartment and take the elevator to the basement to burn his notebooks. The elevator takes him to a different floor instead, where he hears his favorite movie, Night of the Living Dead, and is lured into that apartment by a woman named Natasha, who turns out to be a witch. And when the door closes, Alex's nightmare begins. Instead of being killed by the witch, he bargains with her, and she agrees to keep him alive if he tells her one scary story a night or else. Will Alex be able to come up with enough stories every night until he figures out a plan on how to escape? This is a dark, fast-paced suspense story that is perfect for a chilly October night. And for you lovers of Netflix out there, the movie adaptation was just released on Netflix. Hey there! That's what Uncle Pete says every time he comes over to Louie's house in Saving Winslow by Sharon Creech. Uncle Pete is Louie's dad's best friend and he owns a farm. And every once in a while dad brings home a new baby animal from Uncle Pete's farm. And on this day, in a basket, poking out is a small gray head with black eyes and feathery eyelashes. Is it a dog, a cat, maybe a goat? How about a donkey? Well, this newborn animal is not very healthy because it was born too soon. And on top of it, the mama is very sick and can't take care of it. So they're not sure what to do. Well, Louis accepts the mission to save this baby animal. And mom and dad say, what mission? But it's too late. Louis already decided that he was going to bring this newborn animal 
who's not very healthy to good health to grow like baby animals are supposed to do. The only problem is Louie is not very good with animals, not even fireflies. He caught a firefly, poked the holes in the lid, and it still didn't survive. So Louie's very nervous about this. Then Louie meets a new friend, Nora, who is always very doubtful. And she's always saying, I knew it, but not because it's a good thing, because it's a bad thing. But is it always bad? Hmm. And of course, every time Uncle Pete decides to check in on this cute little newborn animal, he says, hey there, so you know Pete's coming. Well, go ahead and read this wonderful story and find out why Louie names this newborn baby Winslow, how he cares for such a sick little baby animal, all the issues that Louie and Winslow have on the way, and of course, what happens to Winslow in the end. I hope you enjoy the story. Hi, Ms. Beth here to talk to you about some of the intermediate level books. This book is called The Silver Arrow, written by Lev Grossman. This is a fantasy. Kate and her younger brother, Tom, are used to fending for themselves. Their parents are far too busy to spend time with them. They have never met their rich Uncle Herbert. But the night before her 11th birthday, Kate wrote him a letter asking for a present. She didn't know his address, and asking her mother was out of the question. But Kate sealed it in an envelope and put it in the mailbox. The very next morning, Uncle Herbert arrived with a present, a train. Not a model train, but a full-size locomotive called the Silver Arrow. Their parents were not amused and demanded that Herbert take the train back. But Kate and Tom wanted to check it out. And later that evening, they climbed aboard and the train woke up. They became conductors of the Silver Arrow, transporting rare and exotic animals where they needed to go around the world along the magical rails. Kate and Tom would have great adventures and face dangers along the way. Are they up to the challenge? Find out in the Silver Arrow. And if you like that one, the sequel called The Golden Swift is coming out later this year. This book is called The Total Eclipse of Nestor Lopez by Adriana Cuevas. Nestor Lopez is not your typical sixth grader. His dad is in the military, so he and his mother move around a lot. He is a fantastic artist. Oh, and he can talk to animals. Nestor and his mother are now staying with his paternal abuela in New Haven, Texas, where nothing ever happens. Except recently, animals have gone missing. Pets, livestock, wild animals. The neighbors think that Nestor's abuela is somehow involved in the mysterious disappearances of the animals. Turns out there's a witch hanging out in the woods around town whose power will grow stronger during, the, during a solar eclipse. And it just so happens that the next solar eclipse is coming very, very soon. Can Nestor save his new home and clear his grandmother's name without the whole town finding out his secret? This is a fantastic middle grade book, a great mix of folklore and contemporary realistic fiction. This is a type of book you don't want to put down. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. When Stars Are Scattered is a graphic novel by Victoria Jamison and Omar Mohammed and tells Omar's real life story of growing up in the Dab refugee camp in Kenya, which is in Africa. Omar and his younger brother, Hassan, had to leave their home in Somalia, which is also in Africa, when they were very young because of war and violence there. They live in the refugee camp with their assigned foster mother, Fatuma, who is a kind and loving guardian. When the book begins, Omar and Hassan have been living in the refugee camp for seven years, and Omar is approximately 11 years old. As the story progresses, you will learn how Omar and Hassan came to be at the camp and how life turns out for them in the future. As the older brother, Omar feels responsible for Hassan, who is nonverbal, 
and has a history of seizures. Despite these setbacks, Hassan has his strengths that endear him to the refugee community. Omar watches the other kids his age go to school while he stays behind to watch over Hassan. When the opportunity to attend school with the other kids is offered to him, Omar must decide whether or not to leave Hassan behind with Fatuma and get an education or carry on as he has been. It is a tough decision, but one that will have a big impact on Omar's future. Through Victoria Jamison's amazing graphic novel skills, Omar's story comes to life with honesty and even a little bit of humor, despite the not so funny topic. Growing up in a refugee camp without parents is a tough road for Omar and Hassan, but friends and community helpers offer kindness and wisdom that make the situation easier to endure. If you choose to read When Stars Are Scattered, be sure to read all the information um, at the end of the book as well, because that will give you a fuller picture of how life turns out for Omar and Hassan.